So we're going to talk a little bit about, a little bit about Flamingo, which is a site that we built uh, using Gatsby. And so my name is Tim Brown. I'm a senior software engineer at Harry's. My name is May Capozzi. I made a cool shape. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I want to say, first of all, we're really sorry that we made you come inside. Um, it was really nice out there. I was a little like, oh, it's so beautiful. But yeah, so thanks for having us. Cool. So just to give you a little bit of a background about Harry's, uh, it's a men's grooming company that was founded in 2013. Uh, we sell razors as well as other men's grooming products. And we start, actually started as an online company, so e-commerce has always been a core of our business. Uh, and so actually we had over a million women using Harry's razors. So a group of women within Harry's decided to launch a new brand, Flamingo, uh, to cater to those women, uh, or whichever of those women wanted to use Flamingo. So our engineering team actually was tasked to build a new online platform for that brand. Uh, the challenge is that we had this big product launch and we had to handle a lot of traffic. We had very little room for failure um, and we also had a really tight timeline. Uh, we knew from Harry's that most of our visitors would be on mobile so we uh, needed to focus on performance out of the box so that those users didn't have degraded service. Yeah, and so like May said, uh, we were sort of tasked with making a decision for the new technical stack for the front end of Flamingo, um, but it wasn't just about choosing a stack for Flamingo. Um, we actually have plans to launch new brands moving forward, and so uh, we wanted to sort of take the time here and pick a new uh, stack for our front end that, that could scale out to multiple new brands in the future. Um, and for some context, Harry's.com was built as a Rails app starting in 2013, um, and that's been like a really successful website and have a lot of good things to say about Rails, but we also wanted to just uh, look around and see sort of what the what the state of the art was um, in terms of building front ends. Uh, and it was around this time that we actually started finding out about Gatsby, and we started getting really, really excited about Gatsby. Um, and there were a lot of things that excited us about Gatsby when we first found it. Um, so we were already familiar with this idea of static publishing. Um, we had an engineering blog that was running on Jekyll, um, and so we were familiar with the concept of it, but had, I think, a little bit unfairly pigeonholed it into this thing that, you know, mostly worked for... Uh, very sort of simple, maybe like a blog or something, but it wouldn't be sort of a technique you would use to, to build a highly interactive uh, website. Um, but we started to see with Gatsby like that didn't necessarily have to be the case, um, that you could actually build a very modern, highly interactive web app. Um, we were also really excited about all of Gatsby's integrations with different data providers, um, specifically third-party CMSs. We had had the experience of building our own custom CMS, and this time around knew we wanted to integrate with uh, a third-party off-the-shelf CMS. Uh, and then a lot of what Jason was talking about earlier, and I'm sure we'll hear more about, um, we were really, really excited about all the performance work that Gatsby does for us. Um, so we had had the experience of doing some of these things by hand on harrys.com, things like optimizing images for different screen sizes, implementing JavaScript code splitting in Webpack, um, and then additional things that we had never even done before, like some of the prefetching uh, for different routes that Gatsby does. Um, and we knew that that would be a really great foundation to build on uh, in terms of making sure our site had good performance. Um, and performance is really important to us. We knew it was going to be important for Flamingo. Um, we also knew that we wanted to focus on performance at the beginning of the project, as opposed to trying to sort of bolt it on at the end. Um, we'd found, you know, in our experience running Harry's, that it's often easier to think about it up front and set up that good infrastructure. And by building on top of Gatsby, it seemed like we'd be able to do that. Sure, so we want to share some of our architecture with you, so anyone who's looking to build kind of a new Gatsby site can either follow along or take pieces of this, but uh, we went with Contentful for our CMS. Uh, we use Fastly as a CDN and S3 for storing static assets, and then we use CircleCI for our build pipeline um, to orchestrate and publish. So here's like a quick diagram um, of our build pipeline. Uh, also, if you're interested, you can find me later. I can point you to a blog post that talks about this in more depth, but. Basically, the way that it works is that whether there is like a code change, so I pushed a branch to GitHub or merged into master, um, or maybe a product manager or a marketer uh, made a content change in Contentful, those both go into CircleCI. Um, it builds the site. We run Jest tests, Flow. Um, we run Cypress tests on the built Gatsby site. Uh, and we deploy to Amazon S3, where we keep our static assets. And then we serve it uh, through Fastly. Yeah, so once we got some of this initial infrastructure set up, our team started working on the site itself um, for a few months leading up to this launch. Um, and in a lot of ways, it felt like building any other sort of regular React application. Like, there's Gatsby's doing all these amazing things for us under the hood, um, but 
team members who hadn't used Vyatsky before but who were comfortable with React were able to just start contributing uh, very easily. Uh, and we were sort of constantly monitoring uh, the web performance of the site as we were building, but especially as we got close to launch, um, using tools like uh, Lighthouse, which is built into Chrome, or uh, Speed Curve. Uh, and the results, as we thought they were, were fantastic, which was great. Uh, and this led us up to our launch day. So uh, we had lined up a bunch of press for this launch, um, different online magazines and publications. Uh, and because of that, we knew we had to launch at a very specific day and time, and that we would have a sort of huge wave of traffic all coming sort of at the same time, uh, which was one area where we thought that Gatsby's static publishing would also be helpful for us, not just for launch day, but for other big spikes of traffic we get. Um, and so we all sort of gathered around, and we pressed the button to launch the site, and it went great. Um, we didn't have to worry about like the site crashing on the first day that it went live uh, because of this static publishing architecture. Um, you know, there's no web server involved, so we weren't worried about that getting overwhelmed. All of our scaling was taken care of uh, from our CDN, which is exactly what those are built to do, which is awesome. Um, we saw about 10 times the amount of traffic on that launch day as we do now running the site. Um, and so we had this great experience building uh, the site with Gatsby, um, but it's been even more awesome just working with it after the launch as well. Uh, maintaining an existing app with Gatsby is also great, and being on call for this application um, is really amazing. It's very hard for the site to go down, again, because there's no web servers. Scalability is not a concern, uh, and if there are any problems, like we catch those in the build pipeline as opposed to sort of at runtime when those would affect users, which is great. Yeah, even just anecdotally, I, I joined Harry's about a month before launch. Um, and usually, like with the Harry's app, you know, it takes a month or two to get um, set up with on call to really understand like this big monolithic application. Um, but with Flamingo, it was so easy to just go on call. I knew that we ha had rollback scripts, so it was very easy. Um, so it's really, it's really meaningful to just get people into the on-call rotation easily, and Gatsby really helped us to do that. And here's what the site actually looks like, just to give you some sense of some of the interactivity. So like this is, you know, it's a static site, but it's also very highly interactive, um, and it also loads very quickly, which is nice. Um, yeah. So that is what shopflamingo.com looks like. Yeah, you can see the whole thing at shopflamingo.com. Um, and yeah, so some of our results. So we knew that we wanted to deliver this uh, site that was very performant out of the box um, for lots of different reasons. Um, there's some research out there that shows uh, for something to be perceived as faster than another thing, it needs to be about 20% faster for users to notice a difference. Um, we actually delivered a site that was about five times as fast on certain metrics as compared to some of our competitors. So specifically like First Meaningful Paint, uh, which is a really important metric for e-commerce sites. Um, and our users love that. Um, it, we, this really cool sort of thing happened where we actually have users who like notice the speed of our sites, and I think I think that happens with like lots of Gatsby sites. But we like have lots of users who call in and like compliment the speed of the site, um, and it's really exciting when like you actually can deliver something that's that quick of an experience. Like speed sort of becomes a feature that is noticeable to users, like consciously. Um, it's really exciting. Um, our marketing and product teams just really love the experience of having this been built on Gatsby. Um, they're very easily able to change. Uh, whatever content on the site they like in Contentful and just republish the site uh, without having to you know, go through engineering to get a change on the website. Uh, and developers, obviously, we love it. We love getting to use React and GraphQL and all these fun new technologies. And so we have this great situation where you know, the customers love the site because it's fast. Marketing and the rest of the business love it because they can easily update it. And developers get to work with the tools that they love. So that's great. And yeah, like we said a few times, so web performance is really, really important, especially for e-commerce businesses and for Flamingo, um, both because it affects conversion rate as well as uh, SEO. And so Gatsby does a lot here to help us with both of these in terms of pre-rendering content, which is great for SEO, uh, having you know easy plugins built in like React Helmet. Um, all of that makes it really easy to deliver a really high quality site. Uh, and as we look a little bit more uh, towards the future, we're excited to do with more with like Excited to do more with more dynamic pages, um, doing more sort of fetching of data at runtime uh, for more uh, customizability of those pages. Um, plan to integrate with Apollo as we sort of build out on top of new services. Um, and overall, felt really positive about using Gatsby for Flamingo and are committed to using it for our future brands as we launch those as well. Um, so yeah, it's been great. Uh, thank you. And if anyone has any questions, I think we have a little bit of time for, for Q&A as well. Yeah, definitely. So the question was, like, talk about the APIs that powers from the checkout. So we have a, a separate team at Harry's, who is sort of our core services team, and they're in charge of uh, building and maintaining our uh, e-commerce APIs. And so for us, it was just a matter of 
integrating with those. Um, I know there are some other sort of like third party e-commerce uh, APIs as well, but for us, we have a team that maintains those. So just able to integrate with those pretty easily. Can I add something? Yeah. Um, yeah, so the product data is managed in Contentful. Um, beyond that, like once an order gets placed, like that data is not stored in Contentful. That's stored in sort of separate systems. Um, but yeah, like the the sort of presentational product data, like images, um, product names, the content of the product pages, that is stored in Contentful. Um, sort of core product data, things like prices, and that is more on the back end services side of things. And I just want to add something that's great about Gatsby for us is that we're building out new services and we're also building out a component library. And so as we launch new brands, what ends up happening is Gatsby becomes kind of like the skeleton for us. Uh, and then we can like plug the services in and plug the components in. So it, it, it's really speeding up that workflow for us. Rollbacks are really great. So we basically just publish you know, each version of the site uh, into S3. And so each one of those is sort of in its own directory. Um, we actually store a sort of pointer to the, the current version of the site in an edge dictionary in Fastly. And so that's what determines sort of at the edge which version of a site a user gets. And so a rollback for us is as simple as like updating that entry in this edge dictionary, um, which allows us to really easily just point traffic to a previous version of the site. Um, and we have, you know, lots of versions of the site, you know, that just sort of keeps getting incremented. Um, and so yeah, it allows for like really instant rollbacks, um, which is really nice. So the question was like, how do we handle uh, fast changes, things like product availability, or what was the other one? Sales. Sales. Um, yeah, so for us, currently right now, like we, products like going out of stock isn't a something that happens like super frequently on our site. Um, so we are happy with just like doing a rebuild of the site. Our, the builds of our site are pretty quick anyway. It's like a minute in Gatsby build and then another minute to do tests. Um, but uh, in theory, what we could do instead is just like check those things dynamically sort of at more at like runtime. Um, like actually our, we do do that with our, our um, add to cart buttons where like we can actually just gray those out if, uh, you know, when that page loads, check the, API, the inventory API to see if it's like in stock or not and, and do that. Um, and so just this mixing of like build time and runtime. Uh, things like prices, you could also do that with where if you had a product whose price was like updating very frequently, um, you could just render that price sort of when the page loads as opposed to pre pre-rendering it. Yeah, that's a really good question. Uh, so the question was like, are we doing any feature flagging on the site currently? Um, currently we're not. Um, that is something that we definitely do want. Um, I think at the moment, the easiest way to do that would be to do that just in sort of like the plain like client side um, part of things. Um, I think we're really excited about both for feature flagging and also for like A-B testing, figuring out ways to just render multiple copies of the site with the feature flag sort of enabled or disabled and then um, having some more intelligent logic at the edge there to like direct um, whether it's for an A-B test, like people at to certain versions of the site, um, but need to like build that in a little bit to the sort of the build pipeline to generate the multiple versions ahead of time. Um, so yeah, not doing that currently, but definitely something that we want to do. The question was, do we have any um, authenticated only content? So at the moment, no. So uh, Flamingo only has sort of a guest checkout. Um, uh, that being said, at, at some point, we probably will add accounts. Um, and I think we're, yeah, it, it seems like that's, the way we probably plan to do that is like, just uh, render render pages, you know, and that have sort of like the signed out content. And then once you sign in, sort of do all of that, like user data stuff, like fetching at runtime instead. Um, but yeah, excited to like add that, but currently what's not every, like all this content on the site is sort of public and static, yeah. Yeah, the question was, do we handle internationalization? Uh, so, to some extent, uh, currently Flamingo is only in the U.S., so we don't really have to deal with like different languages necessarily. Um, that being said, like we have built um, different, uh, like our currency formatting is built on like sort of web APIs that handle that for us. Um, but really, at the moment, like we don't have to support um, that. Like Contentful as well has like internationalization built in, um, but would probably want to like, you know, set up the build pipeline to render those different experiences separately and things like that. Uh, our product manager is very brave. Um, <laughs> she just cowboys it. Um, yeah, and she said we're not allowed to do that, but she can. So for now, no, but we're really interested in Gatsby Preview. Um, we're excited about it. So, yeah. yeah. Those situations aren't super common at the moment. Um, that being said, usually depending on like the, a given campaign, like we can figure out like a way to uh, deploy the code, but like not use it yet, and then if once that data is in there, like uh, coordinate it as well, um, or you know, 
it's like yeah, merge the code, but don't have the data model set up, and then set them in the in the you know CMS, and then publish that. Um, but yeah, no, that's an interesting question. Usually, it is like sort of one or the other at a given time, like a developer merging new code or a product manager changing content. 